best. Yes. Actually, for every person, every organization, every craft and discipline. And the newspapers, that the media in general, the mainstream media especially, but also most of the so-called alternative media, have abjectly failed. They, are, they, are, uh, they have exerted de facto censorship now for eight years. So I've been asked about that a lot, and you can trot out these various reasons because of the ownership, primarily the, the corporate ownership. The owners uh, choose the top executives mm -hmm. who choose the lower executives all the way down. The whole organization becomes suffused with the value system of the owners. And the owners are part of this establishment you mentioned, yeah. and one way or another they will find ways to stifle the stuff that's really embarrassing, and one of the most embarrassing things are false flag ops. However, I've come to the conclusion that a huge reason for this de facto censorship is that the, and I'm speculating here mm -hmm. for sure, but I'm asking your reaction to my speculation. I'm thinking that one of the most powerful reasons for this de facto censorship going on day after day all around the world in all the media is because of the huge number of moles that are planted in the media at choke points. Mm. Uh, who, who are recruited into the media by MI5, by CSIS, by the CIA, all the intelligent uh, networks, and then they work their way up where they become producers, line producers, uh, executive editors, and so forth. And they, I actually have some proof that this happens, but, but I don't have enough proof to support my big generalization that a large part of the reason for this de facto censorship is a legion of moles and this doesn't contradict the fact that the owners want this. I mean, they allow them to be hired mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. forth. However, do you think I'm being extreme? And, uh, w and whether you do, how extensive would you say is the existence of moles in the media as an explanation for this, this uh, blanket censorship? Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, it, it's a very, there's a very human response going on with many journalists anyway, which is, they are scared of the issue of 9-11 because they worry about their credibility. That's just a human issue. But I do agree with you. I wouldn't use the term mole, perhaps. I'd use the term agent of influence, mm -hmm. which is what goes on in the UK, where um, the journalists are, on national newspapers are sort of seduced into this charm circle, be it of spies or parliamentary briefings or government briefings or whatever. And they become reliant on the stories of the briefings that are fed to them by the intelligence agencies and governments and things. And they are known as agents of influence in the UK media. So it's the same principle, absolutely. And many of them will continue working in the media and go up to higher levels. So they are choke points, you're right. And in fact, there's one very famous man in the UK who went public about this. He admitted to it, uh, a guy called David Rose, in um, an interview he did last year, saying that, yes, he got seduced into this lifestyle. And it's very easy. They can be quite lazy because they're given the stories. They don't have to check them. If they do try and contradict them, the stories dry up anyway, so they lose their, their job. So they go along with it. It's very seductive. That's a form of control. There's also, um, there are departments within the spy agencies which are specifically there to plant stories in the media and to spin stories in the media. MI6 has a section called Information Operations, which is contracted down to IOPS. So that's a formal way of control, but I think it's very much the sort of agent of influence mole aspect is not is not far off the, mark, off the mark at all. I think it's very real, as well as this sort of proprietorial uh, tone which is set, as well as the editorial tone which is set, as well as the um, self-censorship the media goes through as well in the UK, certainly. It's a very subtle form of control. There's a very good book um, which came out by a man called Nick Davies. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's a very famous UK journalist, investigative journalist. Mm -hmm. And it was published last year. It's called Flat Earth News. And he had some university research done. And it turned out that all these aspects influence the media, of course. He was looking at why the media has been dumbed down. All these aspects influence, but also fewer journalists have fewer hours to churn out. He calls it churnalism now. Mm -hmm. Churn out double the amount of, of copy they would have had to do 20 years ago. So they're on this constant hamster wheel of trying to fill the space as well. So that sort of lowers their time to investigate stuff. So there's all these different influences, but yes, moles do exist. Mm -hmm. I think, though, that the internet journalism is an interesting development because, you know, the younger media types are working more on the internet and that's more collaborative, people share information, the readers rate up and down what's a good story. Um, and I think that sort of mentality of working on the internet is going to shift 
control away from the proprietors, from the sort of state apparatus, and will democratize our media again when more and more people just read the, the internet That's media. already happening. It's already happening, yeah. And yeah. we have that slogan, be the media, yeah. just to a great extent happening. And uh, the, one of the most important uh, contributions of uh, good journalism is investigative journalism. Yeah. And it's more important than any other kind. And, uh, but it's expensive, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as the mainstream media do less investigative journalism, uh, I would say, submit, that the 9-11 Truth Movement has become the largest investigative yes. journalism project yeah. on the planet. It's multidisciplinary. Yeah. You mentioned all mm -hmm. the, art, the engineers and uh, physicists and so on. It's global, mm -hmm. and it uses the, the, most, the latest technology to disseminate. So we, we are being the media in a, in a very big way. Yeah. We also have to be our own PR agents. We have to be our own everything. Okay, here's a, just a simple question that you can answer in three minutes, mm -hmm. which is why we have left. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do you see the next 10 years unfolding in respect of the global political, geopolitical, and, uh, and economic and environmental uh, situation is concerned. You have That's three, an easy question. You have three minutes. <laughs> I think we're in a race, actually, between the powers that be, the transnational powers and our, our government power, uh, governments, trying to clamp down on our freedoms, to stifle our dissent, um, where they are turning, certainly the UK is already there, our countries into a police state, where we don't have any rights. We've had our constitution shredded, <clears throat> and the spies and police have wide-sweeping, wide-ranging powers to investigate us, and they do. So there's that race. They're trying to clamp down on us. And on the other side, many of us are really waking up to the reality of what's going on and trying to spread the word as fast as possible and getting people as active as fast as possible to take back their democratic power. So I see it as a bit of a race, not just on the front of 9-11, not just on the front of the wars and the issues of torture and extraordinary addition and the shredding of our rights in our countries, but also in terms, of course, of the environment, as you say, because that comes down to all these interlinkages between government and big business as well. You know, we need the governments to rein in big business to stop all this pollution, to slow down the environmental problems we're having. And yet they're not doing it because of this interlinkage. The establishment is protecting its own interests, not our interests, not the planet's interests, and certainly not our children's interests. Your countryman, H.G. Wells, said history is a race between education and catastrophe. <laughs> Use the term race. Thanks very much, Annie. Thank you very much. We just finished on time. Perfect. <laughs>